Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you four Instant Pot recipes you can make for Thanksgiving. So I'm Kristen, I am sister number two from SixSisterStuff.com. And every Monday I share an Instant Pot recipe with you, but this week's a little bit different because I needed to get my Thanksgiving recipes out so you'll be able to cook them in your Instant Pot so you can free up some room in your oven. So if you're brand new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and then push the little bell so you can get all the notifications every time I post a new Instant Pot recipe or a different recipe for you to make your life just a little bit easier. All right guys, let's head on to the kitchen and I'll show you how to make these four delicious Instant Pot recipes perfect for Thanksgiving. Now the first recipe I'm making today are my green beans. So first you're going to take half an onion and chop it up pretty small. Then push that out of the way because it's time to cut up the bacon. Now the recipe calls for four slices of bacon, but my husband loves bacon so I'm actually going to put ten pieces in there. So on your Instant Pot you're going to push the saute button and you're going to put in your onions and your bacon. You don't need any non-stick cooking spray or anything like that because your bacon has enough grease that your onions are not going to stick to the bottom of your pan. Now for me personally, this is way too much bacon. I would suggest going for the four pieces with one pound of beans, but my husband is going to be happy. So right now I'm just heating up my onions and bacon, and now I'm just cutting my beans in half. You can use scissors or your fingers. It makes it a little bit easier to take bites instead of having a huge bean to eat. All right, so now I'm going to add about a half cup of water so my beans can pressurize and my bacon can finish cooking. So go ahead and put your lid on, make sure that it's sealed all the way, and you're going to move the little knob to sealing, not venting. Okay, so you have to turn your machine off and then turn it back on again so it won't be on saute. So I'm, I push the manual button and I'm going all the way down to three minutes because beans don't take long to cook at all. So when your beans are done cooking, I did a quick release, so I switched the knob over to venting, but you can let it sit there for a while. It's completely your choice. So I go ahead and open my lid, and my beans and bacon are all done cooking. Now you're welcome to add spices like salt and pepper, but I felt like because of the bacon it had a ton of salt in it, and so I really didn't need any extra salt on top of it. So together you just serve your bacon and your beans. Now obviously I have a lot more bacon in there. If you just do the four pieces you won't have nearly as much. So the next recipe is my Instant Pot Stuffing. Now I love stuffing, but Instant Pot Stuffing is so good. Okay, so I have 12 ounces of stuffing. Mine is just the traditional flavor. You can get other flavors too. So I'm adding about half a cup of craisins. Now I just put these in a mixing bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side because I'll add some more stuff later. Okay, so I'm chopping up my celery. I have about three stalks of celery. Make sure you wash it and chop out the bad parts. And then you're going to just chop it up into little pieces because no one likes big chunks of celery in their stuffing. Then you're gonna chop up half of an onion into small pieces. Now we're gonna go to the Instant Pot and push the saute button again. Um, and we're going to melt our butter. So about half a cup of butter into your Instant Pot and you're going to let it melt completely. Then you're gonna add your onions and your celery and you're gonna mix that around until your onions get a little brown. All right, my onions are simmering and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt, not too much salt, just because there's some in the stuffing. And then I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of garlic and go ahead and mix that in with your onions. Let it sit for a few seconds and then we are ready to add the water. So you're gonna add one and a half cups of water and then you're just gonna wait till it simmers until it's ready. So you're gonna take that Instant Pot out and dump it onto your stuffing that's in the mixing bowl. Then go ahead and mix that up so everything's well combined. All right, when you're done with that, I cleaned out my Instant Pot and I'm adding about one cup of water to the bottom of the Instant Pot. Next, I'm gonna add the little trivet so my stuffing can sit on top of it. And I'm gonna add my stuffing to some sort of container that will cook in the Instant Pot. You can use a nice glass bowl that can cook in your oven. It will work in your Instant Pot. This one is a pot I'll link down below um, so you can check it out. So I'm just packing my stuffing on and then I'm going to cover it with foil. 
Now when you're done putting the foil on, you're gonna try your very best to just put it very carefully into your Instant Pot. Now if you need to fix the foil once it's in there, that's completely fine. You just wanna make sure your stuffing is covered with the foil so your stuffing will come out the perfect texture. All right, once you're all ready to go, you're gonna put your lid on your Instant Pot Close it, make sure that the little knob is close, is turned to sealing, not venting. Then you're gonna go down. I like to use my manual, or if you don't have manual, you can use your pressure cook button. They're both the same. All right, so I push manual. I went to 15 minutes. When it was done, I turned the knob to a quick release, and my stuffing is all the way done cooking. Now you can pull out the foil to make sure that you, it's to your liking, but it should be all the way done. You can leave it in your Instant Pot until the rest of Thanksgiving dinner is ready to serve. All right, the next thing I'm cooking a turkey for you guys. All right, so I'm starting with half an onion, one stalk of celery, and two carrots all chopped up for you, and then half a teaspoon of garlic. All right, the trick with turkey and Instant Pot, for every pound, you're gonna add six minutes to the Instant Pot. So let's put everything in. So I'm gonna add all my vegetables to the bottom and my garlic, then I'm gonna add half a cup of water. Now my Instant Pot is a six quart, so I can't get a huge turkey. So this is a smaller turkey that I opened up and it's actually missing about half of the bottom because I really just want the breasts. So there's a gravy packet in there. Just make sure you clean out the little turkey and make sure you can even bring your Instant Pot to the store, put your turkey in it to make sure your turkey will actually fit in your Instant Pot because if it doesn't fit, then you're gonna have to cook it in the oven. Now this recipe also works if you're just getting turkey breast. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper on top of my turkey, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and put it right inside of the Instant Pot. Now I did measure this turkey before I put it in, so I knew I had room for my vegetables and the turkey on top. If you're just doing turkey breast, you'll have no problem. All right, I'm just gonna put my lid on, close it, make sure that the little knob is on sealing, not venting, and then we're gonna go down. I love my manual button, I know people make fun of me, but it works for all Instant Pots and all pressure cookers. So manual is the same thing as pressure cook, and so we're gonna go up to 40 minutes since it's six and a half pounds. Now I let this release on its own for about a half an hour, then I turned the knob, all the steam was out, and so I could just pull my lid right off. Now this turkey was really hard to get a hold of. Um, it was hard to get it out and you'll just see that it literally fell apart in the Instant Pot. It is such good turkey. Then when you're done, you can go ahead and peel back the skin. Some people like the skin and then just chop it up. The last recipe is my mashed potatoes. All right, so my first secret of making the best creamy mashed potatoes is that you have to use russet potatoes. Now these potatoes have a lot of starch in them. The more starch you have, the creamier they're gonna be. So I'm just chopping into small pieces, or I guess bite-sized pieces, my russet potatoes, and I'm chopping about eight of them. If you have a lot of guests, you can get about 12 potatoes in there that will fit in the six quart Instant Pot. All right, I'm adding one cup of water over my potatoes. The lid is going on, make sure that it's sealed tight. Then you're gonna put the little knob to sealing, not venting. Push the manual button, that's my favorite button. And because the potatoes are chopped, you're going all the way up to 10 minutes. Now when your timer's over, that little L will appear on the Instant Pot. That means you can switch your knob over for a quick release or you can let it just release on its own. It will take about 20 minutes. Okay, my pressure has released. I'm gonna turn the lid and take it off. Now, there are a lot of recipes where you leave the liquid in, but I'm going to dump this liquid out because I wanna add milk and just my own ingredients. Okay, so now you're gonna add three tablespoons of butter right on top of your potatoes. Now, the trick is make sure your potatoes are still hot. Next, you're gonna add anywhere from a fourth to a half cup of sour cream, and then one fourth cup of milk. Now it's time to season the potatoes. Now you can add more or less of whatever you want, but I like to add a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now if you don't have any gravy to go on top of this, I would suggest adding a little more salt. But if you're using gravy, no need to. All right, so now I love to use my beaters and mix it. The trick is to mix it and make it cream together while the potatoes are still really hot. 
Now make sure you scrape the edges while you mix so you'll be able to get all the seasoning that's flown on the side or if there's any chunks stuck on the sides. Then just mix it one more time to make sure it's really creamy. Now I like to add a little bit of parsley on top, maybe a little cube of butter just so you serve it, it will look beautiful. Now I like to leave my skins on my potatoes because the Instant Pot makes them so soft but you can also peel those if you don't like the skins. Well I hope these recipes were helpful for you especially around Thanksgiving and when your oven is full of food. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you next week. Bye guys!